100 years ago, Jeanette Rankin was elected to Congress, the first woman ever to serve in the United States House of Representatives. Amazingly, she was elected to Congress before she had the right to vote. 50 years ago, Virginia Slims became the first company to market specifically to women in cigarette brands with their theme of, you've come a long way, baby. And 50 years later, which is now, women hold leadership roles in business in the community but still face a lot of obstacles in a male-dominated society. Women as business and community leaders is the focus for this roundtable. I'm Wes Talon. Thanks for tuning in. Joining me here at the Focus Roundtable are three friends who are probably going to try to keep me in line on this topic today. <coughs> Reverend Heather Jalad, Associate Pastor of Douglasville First United Methodist Church. Mrs. Patty Wank, entrepreneur, owner of Wank Travel and numerous other enterprises. And Mrs. Jennifer Rogers, founder and president of Extreme Images. Ladies, thank you for coming in. It's a pleasure. Thank you. For you are the success stories. That's why I invited you <laughs> okay. here. I don't, I don't want somebody here who goes, oh, I can't do anything. But I seriously doubt that it was easy for you in any of your professional uh, adventures and ventures. And as we go through this discussion, I want you to share as you feel like you can uh, your stories, because we want to hear those. But let's start off with the topic in the form of a question. In a male-dominated world, can women be effective community and business leaders? I absolutely believe that women can be community and business leaders in a very effective manner. I think that um, the things that are essential to that really are um, a passion for what it is that you're doing, a calling to whatever it is, and, and certainly um, putting relationships at the forefront of what you're doing in the community. I know that those three things have driven me um, over the course of my journey, as well as really are the backbone of everything that I do. Um, I certainly never dreamed as a young lady that I would grow up and be a pastor, but um, it was a calling that God placed on my life and um, one that is um, difficult to deny for sure. Um, and I know that uh, that is a passion within me that keeps me um, going and keeps me working toward this vision that God has given me to connect the church with the community. To, to go on that, you said you never thought that this would be where you ended up and I want some of your story so mm -hmm. give me some of your story your uh, you have an undergraduate degree I do in I have an undergraduate degree in uh, mass communications and wow public, How public about relations that? yes <laughs> public relations and um, I utilize the skills that I, I learn certainly um, every day of my life and um, I actually have a culinary arts degree as well, and worked for 13 years as a person, 13 years as a personal chef in people's homes. And um, there was a very big relational dynamic in that regard, um, in building a clientele and um, in building relationships with my clients and my customers, and uh, word of mouth as far as what I was doing. Um, so yes, I never dreamed in a million years that I would end up being a pastor, but um, when God calls, you answer. And um, it has been quite a journey. Um, when I received my calling, my girls were three and almost seven years old and did not know how the dynamics and the details were going to work out. But um, God has been very faithful in, um, in providing to follow the passion that was, was in, my, um, in my heart to pursue that calling. Patty, you've, I introduced you as uh, an entrepreneur you are the master <laughs> thank entrepreneur you. thank you you have uh, had many different experiences many different um, ventures mm -hmm. yes in, in your life what is it that has made you as a woman do these instead of traditional southern lady role. Oh, oh, well, finances have a lot to do with that. 
<clears throat> but actually, I think a lot of it is um, I have a master's in education, taught middle school math for 16 years, have actually taught here at West Georgia Tech, which was an awesome experience. But there's always that sense of um, wanting to explore and find out what it is you can do. And I think a lot of times, and it's exactly what you were saying, is doors open and you go in and you learn something from every one of the doors that opens. Mm -hmm. And until you get to the point that you're someplace that you know is really the right fit. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean the others weren't. It just means you were learning different things in different places. Mm -hmm. Some of them were very positive, try to take back positive things. Um, some of them were very challenging and could have been defeating, um, but that's not what I do. Um, and it's, it's the idea of, and it's that servant heart again, mm -hmm. which is exactly what all three of us have. Mm -hmm. And that servant heart can actually get us in trouble because mm -hmm. <laughs> it can get to where it's very difficult to sometimes to say no and to figure out where your guidelines are and what your, and I don't know if I, Stan will say I still haven't found mine. <laughs> but it's, I think that's what it is, is finding where you feel that you have the biggest impact. Mm -hmm. uh, because for all of us, it's not the job title and it's not the job that we have. It's the relationships mm -hmm. that we build. And the fact that you know that you're there for someone else for something that was important for them and that you were able to be part of whatever that dream or that goal was. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought, why don't I just take the accepted traditional role of wife and mother? I have. Um, my experience is almost a mix of the two of yours. I was raised in early 80s and um, had parents that were of that age of a girl can do anything a boy can do. So mm -hmm. I had that, I had that support from the get go. And when I was in high school, I worked at a couple of little small boutiques, a, a maternity and baby boutique and a, and a, and a gift shop. And I saw how those uh, business owners who were women uh, were able to kind of balance their family and their businesses. Now these were very small, you know, local, local shops with only a couple of employees and, um, that was my goal back then, was to finish college, open my own business. I went to school for business management. I got my degree, got married and had two babies along that <laughs> journey of college. <laughs> but uh, that four-year degree took six years, but it happened and started that business um, in a, in a hobby-type environment. I wanted that freedom, that flexibility of being a mother, being a, you know, a community leader, a, a service, you know, organizer, just all sorts of things. I wanted the flexibility to do anything I wanted to do, which is the way I'd been raised, the way I thought that life should be, and the, what I wanted for my family. I wanted to be, you know, as soon as those babies came along, mama first, that's what mm -hmm. I wanted to do. I wanted to be mom first, but I also wanted to contribute to my finances of my family. I didn't want to put that total burden on my husband. I wanted to be a part of that. I felt like I had been educated and uh, not just educated but had value and able to do other things mm -hmm. and so it opened up a, a doorway for me to have the ability to have both. I love how you said you did that off of a hobby because <laughs> yeah. it really is about passion. It's about it what you're passionate about and kind of what energizes you and what what gets you going and and so you know what is it you know find your passion and you'll never work a day in your life right. i mean if you find your passion and you and you put everything into that i mean it just everything just kind of it it's does. it's just going to be what it's going to be but you're all about whatever it is and that's the only thing that gives you that perseverance mm -hmm. it, you know if you aren't you know depending on your faith and mm -hmm. and living out that continual this is why i do this mm -hmm. even on those hard days even on the the days mm -hmm. where if one more walks through the door that has a frown on their face, you know, yeah. you know, and, you know, having 17 employees, which is still a small business, it seems huge to me because at the end of the day, 
I have the ability to affect 17 families at the least, mm -hmm. you know, not mm -hmm. to mention every customer that comes in the door, every phone call, every interaction with a banker, a, you know, in the, in the community. I think perseverance and endurance are both <laughs> key, but again, they come with passion. It's just, they're just equally matched because mm -hmm. they're, you, you will come up against obstacles we all have. And um, there's just that, I can't quit. Mm -mm. I can't quit, gotta keep going. There's this drive that comes with that. Mm -hmm. You said, uh, you know, another person walking through the door mm -hmm. and that. What have you found in your respective professions um, the misconceptions. You know, do people walk in and expect to see someone else? I'm always assumed to be the secretary. I mean, quite, <laughs> quite, quite <laughs> honestly. I mean, my office it precedes the, pa the, the pastor. We call him the pastor, the, pastor. You know, the senior pastor's office. And so people just automatically assume I'm the receptionist or the secretary. Um, uh, sometimes when they when they walk in, sometimes if I answer the phone, um, even if I answer the phone or have my voicemail that says I'm an associate pastor there at the church, people assume that um, that I'm the secretary or the receptionist. They don't know Reverend yeah, Jalad. Well, people just know me as Heather anyway. So. Well, that's yeah. that's your, all three of you go. Most people mm -hmm. in our community know you by mm -hmm. first your names. first names mm -hmm. and 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 do that. But have you had experiences? <clears throat> where being a woman in business has basically been almost an obstacle. I think it, you, you brought up a valid point where people are shocked when they, they come in and they say, I'd like to speak to the owner, you know, and I'm like, how can I help you? <laughs> you know, and they think I'm just a distraction from the owner and they're like, well, who is the owner? And I was like, my name is Jennifer, I'm the owner, and they're, oh, well, congratulations, you know, and it's almost like they're... Surprised. Yes, and that it's something to, you know, to recognize that. And mm -hmm. then they want to know how I got started and, you know, go Well, they want, your st they want they your want story. They want the story, yeah. People m my age were not raised with women in business and community leadership roles. Mm -hmm. I did not know growing up of any woman who was in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Now, as we were, as I was researching for this show and making my notes and you know, talking to y'all about coming in and being with me, I kept going back through my history and <coughs> I, very male-dominated mm -hmm. businesses. Uh, my undergraduate degrees <coughs> in civil engineering, very male-dominated mm -hmm. profession. And the women there were uh, secretaries. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't until many years later that other than a beauty shop that, that mm -hmm. I actually knew uh, women who had taken this positive step mm -hmm. in their lives. Uh, Patty, you were talking about going through the different doors until you found what you, you wanted mm -hmm. to, to get to. Mm -hmm. I found that very interesting. When you open a door, um, are you, you feel like you're taking a risk? I just jump in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, I don't know. I don't think I, I don't analyze it mm -hmm. that way. It's if I see something that looks like it might be fun and that it's something I could do. And it's interesting because I've really been in roles that really are women dominant as a teacher, mm -hmm. okay? And then with some of the other um, different businesses that I actually were in, that I was in, that they, they were more women. And believe it or not, in the travel agency business, the majority that are at our trade shows and that are working as far as travel agents, the majority are women. And I, and I think that's because each one of the women are the biggest, they are the major purchasers in our country. Hmm. 
the majority of big purchases come through whatever the woman is wanting or doing and she's the one that tends to be in charge for instance if you've ever watched house hunters <laughs> the men follow along and they know the woman is going to be the one to make the decision it's her home but it's the same thing with the travel the majority that I work with our women are the ones that know what they want and are trying to figure out what it is and that, I think, is where I can come in, for instance, with a groom, because I have a better feel for what it is that she's looking for, for something that he wants to do that is the best. So I'm really in a role that is more women-dominated, and the women, the majority of them are owners of their own travel agencies. Okay, do women have then different qualities in their personality? <laughs> oh yeah, God, that, we all know God made us that, different. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, yes. <laughs> Do the, see, I, I told you I was going to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> These three, I'm glad they're my friends. The qualities that, that women have hmm. that maybe men don't have or are more um, prominent or mo or um, Help me out here, Heather, with yeah, the word. Yeah, I think, here, well, you, 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 well a, a, relation, a relational dynamic to their personality. In gen, I would say that's pretty general, but I would say that all three of us have talked about our connection to the community and the significance of mm -hmm. building relationships with people in the community. And um, one of my favorite things is um, Eugene Peterson did a translation of the Bible called The Message, and the Gospel of John starts out... Um, that uh, the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. And really, I believe that's what the church is supposed to do, to move into the neighborhood and to be an integral part of, of what is happening in the community. But we, there's another dynamic, I think, to relationships too, and, and Jennifer and I were talking about this um, earlier, that you know sometimes women have been the obstacle, <laughs> other women have been the obstacle to getting to where we are. Um, I think some of it is we could attribute to they had to fight really hard to get where they were and we're supposed to pay our dues too. Um, so they, they sometimes can make things a little bit more difficult or more challenging. Um, surprisingly so and disappointingly so, I think. So when you find another woman that wants to come alongside you and um, support you and encourage you, um, I, I don't want to say it's rare, mm. but it's not the norm. Um, and you couldn't make that a generalization about women. Um, but I think your question, um, the, the, the special thing about women is, is our ability to relate and um, our, not even just ability, but our desire to relate with people on a personal level um, that maybe is not of the utmost uh, for a male. Do women see things more in color as opposed to black and white? issues. Oh, absolutely. I think, yeah, yeah. I think no so. question. In that we don't compartmentalize things as much. Usually mm -hmm. we can sense when everything that's going around the topic. You know, someone comes in and they're very gruff and they want warning signs for their factory. I can sense probably something has occurred to mm -hmm. It make this man come in and need those warning signs right. and that he's probably had a bad day, you know, and I can... And whereas I might just go, okay, mm -hmm. what do you exactly. want here? Right. How big you want your sign? And yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I can kind of take that into context and say, okay, well, if we've got this, not only do we need your OSHA requirement code numbers on here, but we, you know, you may want to make this a little more aesthetically pleasing for your factory so that it blends with the other signs. We can include your logo, that kind of thing, the, the larger picture that he may not have on his mind coming in the door thinking, I've got to get these up by this deadline. So I think we do put more of a, a total picture out there. And, and read. I think there's just a sense of, and I know you've had that happen. My husband's a minister and has some one of the members, you know, walk by on their way out and you just, you don't know what's going on, but you know they need a hug. Mm -hmm. um, and that may have been something that Stan saw or didn't see. But, but I could feel it. I can tell that there's a difference in the way someone's carrying themselves or 
the way they're sitting or, mm -hmm. or the way they actually move out of the building <clears throat> and know that and and you're the response mm -hmm. most of the time is oh my yes thank mm -hmm. you for noticing mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes this, what you see on the outside is a reaction to something else that's happening on the inside. So, yeah. you know, faced with a similar situation, I'd be like, how can I pray for you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's something else going on here. And how does that help you in your business life? Oh, my, that just, that makes the interaction, that shows the depth of the personal commitment that you have for the person you're working mm -hmm. with. That, that this isn't just let's get in my case let's get your trip booked and make your deposit and just make sure all of the guidelines and the check marks and everything is done it's you know it's it's the feel for uh, I can remember having a, a young man say well I'm not sure what kind of room she would want you know and I said she'll want to be able to see the sunrise and the sunset from your balcony he said fine We'll get a higher. Yeah. We'll, get, we'll get a room. We'll get a room that that's that's higher. I mean, so it's it's that type of um, of feeling uh, that this is an individual that has something special that they are giving to you to work through and help them with, no matter in which case it is for any of us, and that it's personal and that they feel they're the only person that you have that you are concerned about at that point. Mm -hmm. It's that sign, Mary Kay Ash always said that. There's a sign on every one of us that says, make me feel special. And that's something I think our world is missing out on because too many signs are saying, you make me mm -hmm. feel good. That's your job. Mm -hmm. No, it isn't. My tagline is be a great year one day at a time. Not have one. Don't expect anyone else to create it. That's my, that's my responsibility to go in out wherever I'm going and that I'm going to be a great day not for me, but knowing I am for someone else. As you go out into the community, each of y'all have, we've talked about really more your professional life so far, but going out into the community, all three of you are involved outside of your business, mm -hmm. attached to your business, mm -hmm. but outside of your business, mm -hmm. in the community itself. What was your, quote the, the the John John Warren. Oh that that the word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. And moved into the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, how important do you feel that you are getting out and moving into the neighborhood? Mm -hmm. I think it's very important. Mm -hmm. I, you know we not only do I have a business here, but I live here. My children go to schools here. We go to church here. It, it, it's my community, you know, and it's a it's it's not just networking for my business. It's it's so much more than that. It is, um, you know, recognizing those faces at Friday night football games and saying, "Oh, I remember you from." You know, it's that it's that relationship that makes that individuality. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that individual relationship. A lot of times, that's what keeps people coming back to us. I don't know how many times we see people that come back to us, um, not even for a sign, but say, "Hey, do you know somebody that does this?" Because they feel comfortable with us. They have that relationship with me that they feel comfortable saying, "Well, where do you get your T-shirts made?" That's not something you do, but you know people will see me at Rotary Club or at church and, and bring that up and they know that I'm connected to extreme images but if we weren't approachable as people or mm -hmm. uh, someone that cared about them individually they, they wouldn't mm -hmm. approach us with that. Mm -hmm. How important, <coughs> you mentioned Rotary, that's an outstanding historic service club. How important is it for women to be in organizations such as 
Rotary and other civic groups like Kiwanis and Lions Club and Optimist and things like that? Well, it, it's vital for the club and for the community because if you have a, there are still Rotary clubs around that do not allow women in their clubs. Whoa. In the I state did not of know Georgia, that. Wow. Really? Neighboring counties <laughs> that do not allow women in their, in their mm. clubs as of yet. Um, oh my. It, and they may not have their bylaws written that way, but it might be an environment in which it, it's not really conducive to, to women. Uh, but that makes them an irrelevant club, honestly, because the club needs to be indicative of the community in which it serves. Right. If you don't have representatives of each part of the community in your club, then you're not going to affect your community in a wide range. <clears throat> wow. At that, you're just a one ministry, you know, outlet. You're not a community driven club. Is it more difficult in the South because the South is traditionally extremely conservative? Mm -hmm. um, it's always had the least amount of support for equal rights. It's always been the last states um, to, to approve the amendment to the Constitution for women to vote 100 years ago, 97 years ago. Uh, to, being in the Deep South, um, women in the pulpit, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. There was a, there was a time and day when um, our, we, the way the church, church is organized, we have district superintendents, would go to the church and say, will you accept a woman? Some still do that. Um, so they actually had a choice to say, no, we don't want a woman. <laughs> well, the church that I currently serve has never had a female senior pastor. Um, I, my previous appointment was in a church where I was the first uh, female lead pastor, and um, that was challenging, to say the least. <laughs> and there are still churches which, uh, denominations, mm -hmm. which do not allow women in the pulpit. Yes. Well, that's that. specific to, you know, the reading of Scripture. And, and yeah. there's, and we're not... Right passing judgment no. on anything. We're just make, stating a fact right. on that. Uh, the church I attend just about two years ago had first female pastor and um, split the church. Some people left, went to a much more conservative denomination. Thought that was really interesting. Um, Patty, you are very involved in the community. Yes. Um, that's how we first met. Mm -hmm. Chamber of Commerce, um, Community Organizing Resources for Excellence, all of these other things. Why? I think it's because there's a, there's a need to have more people involved. If I'm not involved, I don't know what's going on in the community. And if I don't know what's going on in the community, then how can I find out where my gifts and my talents, and, I, and, and, I, and that sounds like that may be like, oh wow, look at me. No, it isn't. Mm -hmm. We were each created with gifts and talents. And I think if we don't recognize what God has given us, then we're basically saying, hey, you really messed up when you made me. Mm -hmm. I mean, either I know who I am and what I can do, or I ignore it. Well, I mean, for me, it's always what you see is what you get. <laughs> and, but it's, it's knowing, for instance, using CORE as an example. Commun I work really hard to get other businesses involved in CORE because it's, it's all of the different organizations that are within the community that are affecting our families and our children. And if we don't have business leaders in there, community leaders in there, then this county doesn't know what's going on and they don't know what the needs are. And they can be really quick to step back and say, Oh my, this isn't going right, or th and it's like you're you're talking without knowledge, 
And I think knowledge of what we have and what this amazing county is offering and how hard people are working, the hours they give up mm -hmm. in order to take care of the families and the children in our community. And we have some huge obstacles in our community for us to work on. And we can't do it by ourselves. Right. It, takes, it takes everyone coming in and having the knowledge of what's going on. Same thing with Higher Standards Foundation, with CORE, I worked with the Danny Center. Um, it's, it's all of these that are family focused and that's what I've always been. That's what travel is, that's what education is, that's what school is. So I've been involved with anything that had to do with families. Um, and it may not be I can give as much myself, but I sure can go out and find other people to bring right. in and to get them involved. So that And that's what I do. It's what I do in the chamber. It's what I do in the Douglasville B2B, um, the business to business that we have, the networking, is saying you're needed. If you want the community to know that you are a value, then you need to show them you're a value. Because we can't do anything unless people know we care. Right, and by virtue of the positions that each of us are in, we are a, a prime candidate to help build those networks with mm -hmm. people and, and point to this person or that person right. or that organization. Um, I know one of my best experiences in recent history was being a part of the Leadership Douglas class last year. And, um, and getting to make those connections with some of the leaders in our community and getting to know some people to better and um, what those different organizations that they represented have to, had to offer, whether they be government or otherwise. And um, one of the, the beautiful ways that that kind of um, bore itself out was when we had a, a weather emergency and we opened the, one of the buildings up at the church uh, as a warming center. And uh, I rolled up to meet the Red Cross who had been um, uh, directed by Jason and I over mm -hmm. at em emergency management um, over there to that building and I rolled up and uh, I saw my, my leadership Douglas classmate there um, and uh, Scott, I'm, I'm totally forgetting his name right That's now. That's okay, <laughs> keep going though. Uh, there with the fire department and... Scott Spencer. Yes. No. No, Scott Satmire. Yeah, thank you. So I rolled up to the, to the building and met the Red Cross there and um, uh, Scott Zachmeyer, my leadership Douglas classmate, and we opened up the building together and was texting with Sue Ann Shaw, who was another one of my uh, leadership Douglas classmates from the Douglasville uh, Police Department. And it was just kind of a, a beautiful marrying of all of the relationships that had been formed and, and how we were best using those together uh, for our community and for the betterment of our community. So, Each of you has talked about um your business and how your business extends into the community and the community extends into your business mm -hmm. on that. So as we move forward, like I said when I opened up, you three are success stories. You have found your passion. Maybe you're still opening a couple more doors to oh, yeah. you know, do another couple you know more that. things like you know, <laughs> Patty's just <laughs> Opening doors and leaving the ones behind her open too, doing that. Can we show her doors to open? Yeah, yeah we can. We can and do that. But we have an, a whole new generation of young women coming along. You know, you you have come through certain obstacles. Uh, as I said when I was growing up, you know, the women were school teachers and secretaries. Mm -hmm. That was that was hairdressers. That was about it. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for the young women who are? getting ready to follow in in your footsteps here. The preacher's gonna speak in biblical metaphors. So I'm gonna say find a Paul and find a Silas. Find someone to mentor you. Um, if there's someone that you admire, someone that has a skill set that you desire to have or something that you want to work toward, contact that person. Many people are so gracious to, sh to share time with you and to, to give you some guidance and some mentoring. So I'd say f find your Paul, and then I would say find your Silas or your Barnabas or someone to mentor because in um, you know kind of receiving what you have received from whomever it may be, uh, I think we're also called to give back and to 
bring up that, that next generation of, of female leaders or just leaders in general. So find that person um, to mentor, um, to disciple, to, to lead and guide. And I think oftentimes in, in teaching and guiding someone else, we, we discover some new things about mm -hmm. ourselves and new doors are opened. Mm -hmm. yeah. My advice would be to, to remember that each person that you deal with is an individual. I guess it kind of goes back to the treat others as you would have to be treated, mm -hmm. but there's so much to be said with that because each person that you deal with, you can leave a lasting impression. You're going to leave an impression with them, no matter what that impression is. That's that's to be determined by you. But to remember that each person you encounter is an individual with a lot going on, just like every one of us has a lot going mm -hmm. on, and how you relate to them and treat them says a lot about who you are. And I think a lot of it... <clears throat> is that sometimes young people can look and say, wow, that didn't look like, look how successful you are. That doesn't look like that had to be that hard. I don't think I could go through that. And I think it goes back to some of the things we've been talking about, is we need to share our journey mm -hmm. and the things that we've gone through and what knocked the wind out of our sails. Mm -hmm. And, and, and show the, the realism of it, that going into business for yourself has a lot of late nights and no money, and you're trying to figure out how, to, and I'm talking about myself, trying to figure out how, what am I gonna do <clears throat> so that I don't spend very much money and I don't have that much to work with, but what can I do to get out there? And, and help someone understand that that's exactly what it's going to take. You know, if you have a dream, don't lose it. You can go and work for someone else, and you can find out maybe some of the tips as to what to do. But don't lose your own dream. This is a lot of the things that I say with young people, is I know each one of you has something you thoroughly enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. What is it? What is it you would like to do if you really could? Okay, now find the mentor, find some place to go to learn the skills that you need and then you'll know when you're ready, you know, to step out on your own. And too many adults have lost, they've lost their dream and they've settled for a life that isn't full of None of us know what's around the corner. We don't, but it's okay. That's just, that's part of the journey. And some things hurt really, really, really bad. And you have people you think you can trust. And you find out that your instincts you weren't listening to. Hmm. And you figure out what you need to do because we all know that we have that responsibility as that child of God, that we are to be the example, and we're to set that example. And the sky's the limit. And at any age, mm -hmm. I didn't start the travel agency until, what would have been, nine years ago, I was 62. Hey, I've got another good 20 or 30 years. I plan on doing a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> opening more doors. Absolutely. Ladies, thank you so much for this discussion mm -hmm. and for being with me today. As I was doing my research for the show, came across two quotes which I thought were appropriate and I want to share them with you. The first is from comedian Whoopi Goldberg who said, we're here for a reason. I believe a bit of the reason is to throw little torches out to lead people through mm -hmm. the dark. That's, good. That's, That's great. You just talked it. about that. Awesome. The second is from Mickey Taylor of Essence Magazine, who said, many women live like it's a dress rehearsal. Ladies, the curtain is up and you're on stage. I hope our discussion has brought a little focus into this subject for you. I'm Wes Allen. See you next time.